welcome to the next module and in this particular lecture i'll be talking about the intuition behind association learning and the model we are choosing or the algorithm we are talking about is a priori algorithm so in this particular lecture we'll be talking about what a priori algorithm is and what are the association matrices that we have to find out the association between two different items so what is a priori algorithm this algorithm is basically used to find out the frequent item sets in a data set so for example you go in a mall then you can clearly see that you have bread and eggs placed together honey sugar coffee all these products are placed together whereas rice pulses like uh, and the spices are placed together why is it so because they have find out the association between the items that people bought from a supermarket right so as per the rules or as per the calculations they come out with a solution that if a person buys a dairy product he is more supposed to get a bread with it or a butter with it or egg with it right and if a person takes pulses then he is supposed to be having spices or rice also with it so these are some association rules that are very important for supermarkets to increase their sales right so that's where the a priori algorithm come into picture or the association rule mining come into picture when we have to find out the frequent item sets in our data set right so let's understand how the stuff works so to find out the association between different items we are, we have to come up with some matrices right so these are five different matrices that we have right so support confidence lift leverage conviction and now i'll tell you how these matrices work what is their significance and what intuition we can have using their values right so first of all we'll be talking about the association rule and the matrices involved then we'll see how the a priori algorithm brings all these association rule to picture and finally works upon okay support support means how frequent an item set is in all the transactions right so if we have different items in our supermarkets for example egg bread jam so to count the support of the item egg what we have to do is we have to find out that how frequent this particular item is in respect to all the transactions so the number of transactions which have egg and the total number of transaction including those having egg and including those which are not having egg so with egg plus without egg so all the transactions in the denominator and only the transactions with egg in the numerator so this is kind of a ratio so we can find out how frequent this item is suppose for example we have 9 nine transactions in which we have egg out of 10 so the support of egg is 0.9 or you can say 90% similarly if we have only two transactions in which we are having egg and there are total of 10 transactions then we can say that we have a support value of 20% for the egg that means that this particular supermarket is having more frequent sales of egg as compared to this particular supermarket right so this is support now we'll talk about the confidence confidence is that the likeness or the probability of occurrence of a consequent on a cart given that the cart already has an antecedent so uh, what we what i mean to say is this a means antecedent right antecedent and this c means the consequent okay so if i say suppose confidence of bread over butter so what that means is so it means the likeliness or the probability of occurrence of bread 
of butter sorry so what it means is suppose i have butter then what is the probability that a customer will buy a butter or what is the probability of occurrence of butter in the cart given that the customer has already bought bread right so we have to find out the correlation between two items so what is the probability of a customer buying c if he or she already has bought the product a right so we have to find out the occurrence of c with respect to the a that means that c is dependent on a for its sale so that means we are finding out the probability that what is the probability of the sales of c given that the customer has already purchased the product a so confidence of a to c is support a to c by support a right so support a to c means all those and uh, support of the transitions where we have a and c right so we'll say support a and c by total transitions upon support a means transitions in which we are having only a upon total transitions right so this is more or less a c by a transitions right so this is how we calculate the confidence that is the probability of a or c being together considering a is already present going to the next matrices we have lift so lift means the measure of how much more often the antecedent and consequent of a rule a to c occurs together then we would expect if they are statistically independent so what it means to say is that it find out the togetherness of the two items considering that a has no correlation or no relation with c keeping the two products independent of each other it is there to find out the togetherness or the relation between the sales of these two products right so for that it what it does is it divides confidence of these two products with the support value of the consequent so what it is doing is it's comparing the correlation between these two values a and c by considering that these product are already independent and if a and c are independent then the lift score would be exactly 1 so if we have a lift score equal to 1 then we can say that these two products are independent of each other and they have no correlation in between them right then we have leverage what leverage means is it computes the difference between the frequent values of a and c appearing together and the frequency that they would appear independent of each other so for that it calculates the support value of a and c minus support value of a into support value of c right so if we are getting a zero value that means these two products a and c will have no relation between them they are independent of each other coming up to the last of our matrices we have conviction so conviction means that the consequent is highly depending on antecedent right so we have to find out how how much the consequent is dependent on antecedent for its sale so for example if i am saying that we are talking about suppose bread and egg so conviction means that how important is the sale of bread for the sale of egg so for that what we have to do is the formula is 1 minus support of c divided by 1 minus confidence of a to c so if in case we have a perfect confidence score then in that case this confidence of a to c will be 100% right so it will be 1 so 1 minus 1 will be 0 so denominator will be 0 then in that case we have a conviction score of infinity that means that consequent is totally dependent on incident for its purchase or its for its sale so that means they are highly correlated to each other consequent is highly dependent on antecedent for its sale right similarly if the items are independent then the conviction is 1 okay so 
that's all about matrices this, these are some of the matrices or these are some of the values which we consider when you are finding the association each of this is having different intuition as i have explained so as per our choice and as per the intuition we want or what we are expecting we choose the matrices accordingly so now we'll see how we can use these matrices in our a priori algorithm so suppose we are given a data set where we are given these transitions number and these are the items that a person has bought in these transition so this is the data set and then we have to consider the association matrix so the association we are considering is that we want a minimum support count of 2 and a minimum confidence should be 60 percent right so now according to our association we perform our a priori algorithm and we reach up to such frequent items so the basic intuition behind doing all this is that to have a very frequent superset the subset needs to be frequent also right so basically to reach up the higher level it's very important that the lower levels also should be strongly associated with each other right so what we'll do is we'll first count the value of these transitions so uh, let's say we are counting the support count of these values so l1 is 6 l2 7 l3 6 l4 2 and then l5 okay that's a just a random data and these are just a random examples you don't need to calculate all this because that's a very uh, less data and we are just i have just prepared it so that you can understand okay so you can see that we are not having l6 l7 l8 and l9 because they were having less support value so i removed these values so we are left with these five items only now what we'll do is we'll find out a pair of all these values right and we'll check the support of all this so we have l1 l2 l1 l3 l1 l4 l1 l5 right so set complete and then l2 l3 l4 l5 l3 l4 l4 l5 so set complete and then l3 l4 l3 l5 set complete l4 l5 so you can see that we have all the combinations with us right now but in these cases the support value is less right so we have to remove these values so now what are the items we are left with so we are left with only l1 okay so support is two so we have to uh, we can remove these two also over here these because it's only two so we can remove these values also okay so what we are left with we are left with l1 then l2 and l3 okay so l3 and so now the support value of these values is less than 2 so we have to remove these values okay so what are the items we are left with we are left with l1 l2 l3 l4 and l5 okay so what we have to do is we have to basically find out the sets of this so till now we have prepared a pair of two items and we'll find a pair of three items so l1 l2 l3 and then we again count the support that is the transitions in which we have all the three items together by the total transitions we have okay so that's how we calculate our l1 l2 and l3 pairs and there will be so many pairs but after calculating suppose these are the two pairs that we have with us because they are having support value of two or more than two and then these values will be the associated items that we want after find out, finding out these values we can find out the confidence of suppose we can find out the confidence of l1 l2 to l3 l1 l2 to l5 right and l1 l3 to l2 and such we find out the confidence value and if they have a confidence value more than 60 percent then we will consider those item sets and we can prepare our marketing strategy like this for example that we have two items bread butter right so if they have a very high confidence value say 80 percent so we can we know that if a person buys a bread then the person is already buying butter also right 
and if we have suppose say uh, bread and jam so we know that a person is buying bread but he or she is not buying jam because in that case it has less confidence value so we can put up an offer on this particular item set that if you buy a jam you will get a bread also right or i we can say that if you buy 10 breads then you can buy uh, then you will be having a free jam one free jam with you so this is how the strategies are planned in supermarket so that they can increase up their sale by finding out the patterns or the behavior of the customers so this is all important when we are talking about association mining that is we find out the association or the correlation between two items and we predict the customer behavior that if a person is buying this item then he is this much probably or uh, with this percentage we can say that he or she will buy this product also so we have these libraries numpy pandas metrolib and that's our data so the data we are using is is a mall data okay i'll show you what data we have so for that let's wait for data to get load okay so our data is loaded now so let's uh, let's check our data okay let me show you the data. okay so that's the data we have so you can see that we are given number of transitions and the items a person has brought okay so that's our data and now you can see that we are given the transaction and the items a person has bought from that particular mall so you can see that we have transaction one so in transaction one the person has bought bread only in transaction two there were two items that were bought which were scandinavian and other one also was scandinavian then in third transaction we have hot chocolate jam and cookies so basically what we are given is we are given the date the time the transaction number and the items that were bought in that particular transaction and we'll be using this data only and we'll find out the association between the items that are present in the mall so that based on that association of the items the marketing department or the sales department of that particular mall can prepare their schemes their marketing strategies and the offers for the customers so that they can increase their sales so we'll be analyzing the customer behavior and we'll be preparing our strategies as per that also let's check the data info okay so that's the data info we have okay for so we'll also check that whether we have any null values in our data or not so we have to pre-process our data so first of all what i'll do is i'll lower all these words items because there can be a case that if we have a bread capital bred and small capital bred then it will consider it as a different object or a different item so for that what we'll do is we'll say data and then we are talking about item column right so it's item and then we say that we want our data item column so to have a value with string dot lower okay and then let's check the data that is we whether we have any null values or not okay And then we have to count the value okay so value counts okay so you can see that we have 786 values which are having a non value that is a null value in the item column and 20,507 entries are just perfect so we have to drop those values which are having null value in it so for that we will simply use drop so data equals to data dot drop what we want to drop is we want to drop those entries in the item column where we have null value so we will say data and in data which column we are talking about we are talking about the item column 
so data dot item equals to none and we have to drop the index also that particular entry with number okay sorry yeah so here we go now what data we have is the data we have is basically is not having any null values within it it's completely fine to move on let me show you it again okay so that's the data uh, the changes have been made in the entry numbers where we were having the null values with us now we'll explore our data so let's see the total number of items we have in our data first of all check the total count that is a unique count of the items we have so for that what we will say is data item right because we are talking about the item column we are only interested in that and we say that how many unique values it had so for that we use n unique sorry so we have total of 94 unique items in our supermarket or in our data we are given also we can see that what are those unique values that we have for that we use unique simply right so these are the 94 items that we have in our data given to us and we'll be finding out associations between these 94 values right if you have to do it manually then it will take a very long time because you have to find out the correlation between each of this we have to make pairs two pair three pair follow the association so it's very uh, hazardous work or so it's very difficult task to do so that's why this algorithm works completely fine when we have to do such kind of work you can also check the total items we have right okay so the total items purchased were 2507 as I have shown you above. So this is the total number of items being purchased by the customers. Now let me show you which items were sold or purchased by the customers the most. For that we'll use group by. So we'll say data dot group by and how I want to group it? I want to group my data based on the item column, right? And I'll say the size of that particular entry, I'll sort it. Sorry, I'll sort it as per the decreasing order. So we'll say ascending equals to false. By default, it's true. That means sort it in a ascending order but i want to have it in a descending order okay so these are the top 20 items i have printed and you can see that the item coffee is being purchased the most by the customers then bread then tea then cake and so on right you can also plot this particular data and can visualize it in a much better way for that you just need to do is dot plot okay uh, not just do it let's do it in the next line okay so for that you have to say dot plot you want to plot this particular value and what kind of graph you want we want a bar graph because it's very easy to understand when we are working on the count of the values and then keeping all the things aside we can simply so you can see that's our graph these items these are the top 20 most purchased items as per the transaction data we have so coffee is the most purchased item by the customers then bread then tea then cake right so this is how we can visualize the data we have now we'll understand how this data works okay so for that what i'll do is i'll separate out i'll uh, okay so for that what i'll do is the data we are given is we have the transaction number in different i in different entries so what i'll do is i'll make this transaction as a row and i'll sum up all these items being sold 
to that particular transaction in one entry only so that we can easily access our data okay so for that what i'll do is let's name it as combined data okay so combined data equals to pd dot data frame sorry data frame and then what we have is we'll say that i want to group by my items with respect to the transaction and the items we have okay so we'll say that in the items sorry i want the column items right and what data i want in that column is the data i have i already have i'll group by it based on the transaction and the items so transaction okay this is our old data and the new data we are making it will say that we'll put all these items in a column items right and in the previous data the column which were which we were having was the item okay so i am grouping up my items based on the transaction number and it has to be unique so the unique transaction number i'll group by the items i have then i also want the items count that we have in that particular transaction so for that what i'll do is i'll again copy this i'll say that i want the items count so items count that will be my another column and there i want the number of the items unique items i have in that particular transaction okay so my data is prepared now also i have to reset the index values because in that case the values will change because you can see that here we have the index values 0 1 2 and if we club this then after one we'll be having next third index so i don't want it to happen so for that we'll rearrange the index values of ours so we'll say combine data dot reset index and we have to set it as true okay and then I'll print the top 10 values so that you can see how the data is being combined. So now here it is you can see that now we have only one transaction number and with respect to that we have a list of items we have earlier in the data given above let me show you that also wait a second. Let's print out the previous data that we were having. So data dot head 20. So in the previous data, you can see that we have the entries based on the items we have. But the new data we have prepared is we have entries based on the transaction number and the items that is here. You can see these items are now clubbed to a single entry in a list. So we have three columns, the transaction number, items and the item count, right? Also, let, let me show you how we can get more information from our data. We can find out the range or the date given to us, right? So we can see that for how long we are collecting this data. For that, in data column, in data, we have date column. So data, date right so the minimum date we have so the data we are given is it's from 30th of october 2016 and similarly we can find that till which date we are given this data so we are having a data till 9th of april 2017 Let's check the total number of days we have. So we'll simply can use an unique. So it's that much simple. So we have a total of 
159 days data with us right so these transactions that we are given or the total items we have sold we are given a data from 30th of october 2016 till 9 of april 2017 so the total days we are talking about is 159 so this was how we can handle our data we have prepared our data processed it and combined into such forms so that we can feed to our models and we have find out some explorations over our data intuitions based on it so this is how we work on such data and in the next coming lecture i'll show you how this data is finally gonna be used to train our a priori algorithm and then we'll perform the association over it what we'll do is we'll build up our priori algorithm using the association matrices that we have so first of all we have to import our libraries so for that go from ml extend okay that's a library that you have to download so that you can run your a priori from that so ml extend frequent patterns will import a priori and similarly using the same library we'll import our association rules that we have so association rules right right sorry it's extend yeah so we have imported our libraries we have our a priori and association rules with us and now we have to transform our data before applying the a priori algorithm for that what i want to do is i have to prepare my data so that at each entry level i have the index as a transaction number and then i have columns with each column representing a data item so what i'm trying to do is i'm trying to prepare a vector form so that if a transaction has a particular item then it will have one otherwise that particular entry will be zero so for that let's prepare our data so let's say dt okay so dt equals to data dot we have to group by our data okay so what we want to group by we want to group by both transaction and items based on the items we have okay so we'll say group by using transaction and the item column then prepare the items as such based on the count okay let's print it as well so now you can see that initially we were having transaction one then item we have introduced the count as well but what we are doing is we are group grouping the transaction and item and then we are putting up the item count as well so you can see that initially we were having two entries for scandinavian but now we have only one entry for scandinavian and we have a item count as well okay and now we'll prepare the vector form as i was telling you about so for that what we'll do is dt equals to dt dot unstack okay let me show you what i mean to say so okay so now this is the kind of data i want we have the transaction number with us so if this uh, so suppose we are given this transaction number and in this column suppose if it was having break bread so this entry would have been marked one and otherwise it would have been zero so it's initially given right now as null but we want to convert it to as a one zero form so that we can feed it to our models so for that what i'll do is i'll say dt equals to sorry dt equals to dt dot reset the index values and then set index as per the transactions that we have 
right so let me show you the changes that i am telling you about so our index value will be according to the transactions that we have right t dot okay so now this index values are the transaction values that we have and now also we have to fill this null values with zero so dt equals to dt dot fill na with a zero and then dt dot head okay so that's the data now we have so we have zero if that particular item is not present in the transaction and one if that particular data is present in the transaction okay so for that what i have to do is i have to encode the data like such so i'll say encode let's name it as unix okay so all the data will pass it over here and if my data is less than equal to zero sorry then return zero and if it's greater than equal to one don't worry the x value will won't be less than zero it will be equal to 0.0, .0 only and y greater than one for example scandinavian it will be having two entries suppose this was present in transaction two and suppose this column is a scandinavian column then in that position it will be having two but i want a sparse metric so i'll say zero or one so if i have a value greater than one or equal to one then return one only right then dt equals to dt dot now i want to apply this function over all the units that i have so i'll say encode units so this function will apply over all the data entries we have right let me show you the data again so dt dot head okay so now we have zero only now these are the matrices that i have already explained you in the previous video support confidence lift leverage conviction so that's our data and now it's time to apply our a priori algorithm over this data right so for that what i'll say i'll say frequent items equals to a priori and then i'll pass on my data dt and which conditions as i have told you in the lecture that we are considering a support minimum support equal to 2 so here i'll say that i am considering a minimum support of 0.01 okay and i'll use the column names as well that we have equals to true right so let's apply the priori okay it's giving an error let me check it again okay sorry it's min support yeah so we have applied the priori over our data right the steps we have performed in the intuition video and after reaching to a final superset we'll apply the matrices we'll check the confidence we'll check the support again so now these matrices are this one support confidence lift leverage and conviction okay so after applying the a priori we have the supersets with us and we'll be applying these metrics over there and then we'll find the association from this data as simple as that let me copy this okay so now it's time to apply the association over there so i'll say we have to prepare the rules so rules will be according to the association so association rules that we have already imported and i'll say the frequent items applying over it and then which metric i am following i am following the lift metric okay and then i have to set the min threshold that what minimum value i want my data to have in this particular matrix as in that case i have considered confidence in the code i am considering the lift 
and in the intuition as I have told you that I am considering a minimum support value of 60% in this case I will be considering a minimum support minimum threshold value for lift to be 1 and lift can be in the range 0 to infinity okay so rules dot head okay so that's the kind of pair we are having with us and now let's refine our data refine our results so i'll say i want only that data in which i have the rule where lift is equals to greater than equal to one and where the confidence value is more than 50 percent so rules and then I'll be accessing this confidence column, right? So confidence and it should be greater than equal to 50%, right? So 0 0.5. So okay, rules, right? Actually, it's a data, so we have to mention the data as well. Data frame. So, okay, so that's the final data we have, which results we are talking about. So, let me show you. Considering the particular example of a toast and a coffee, as you can see here, now you can see that we have a support value of 0.023 confidence of this. That means 70.44% of all toast transactions contain coffee right and similarly the other intuitions so the value of lift in that case is 1.47 that means coffee is 1.47 times more likely to be bought by the customers who buy toast compared to the default likelihood of the sales so if a person is buying a toast then the purchase of coffee is 1.47 times higher than those customers who only purchase coffee Right? So this is how we develop intuitions based on the final matrices we have. This is how we find out the final pairs using the a priori. Right? So this was all about the association rule mining and the working of a priori algorithm. So you yeah, are good to go to find the relations and the data you have and prepare the strategies that you want. So it's a very real world example that I have shown you in this particular lecture. I hope you would have understood all the concepts clearly. So best of luck and keep following.